Hello, thanks for watching our Smithy walk around. Today we're looking at the Smithy MI329M milling machine. This is a medium duty gear drive milling machine. It features a table size of 9 by 32 inches. It has flat dovetail ways on the bed for accuracy. These are hand scraped. It has a square column again with dovetail ways that are hand scraped for accuracy. All the adjustments featured on it are tapered gibs, again for improved accuracy. It does have a head that rotates and it does feature a 5 8 or a 5 inch cutting depth on the spindle. It is a standard R8 spindle just like a bridge port. It also has three T-slots that run the entire length of the table that are also 5 8 inch T-slot nuts. It is a fairly heavy machine. It weighs about 762 pounds. It is a gear-driven spindle with six speeds, easily selectable. It, again, it does accept industry standard tooling. There's nothing proprietary on it. The square column assures that as you adjust the head up and down that you're able to maintain your accuracy. You're able to come back to the same spot. The dials on the machine are graduated in thousands, and there are floating dials for ease of operation. The motor can be set as either 110 or set to 220. It uses a standard plug on 110 and a regular uh, NEMA 6-15 plug on the 220. And the machine has a reversible motor. It's very easy to control. You simply turn it forward, off, reverse, back to off. The spindle on the machine runs a standard 7 by 20 drawbar, which is the same as Bridgeport, so all your Bridgeport tooling is going to fit here. It's a standard R8 spindle at the end, and a drill chuck and arbor come with the machine. It's a standard 5 8 inch drill chuck that comes with the machine. You have six speeds to operate with on the machine, and they're easily selectable. You can run from 95 all the way up to 1500 RPM, and it's just a matter of shifting the controls on the front of the machine. It also has an adjustable depth stop, so you can adjust the depth to where you need it to be, set it, and then it allows you to repeat the same operation with great accuracy. The spindle also features a digital readout on it. So you've got, in addition to the control depth stop, you've got the ability to control and read in either inches or metric, zero it at any point, or reset. You've also got a spindle lock to absolutely bring the, to the spindle to the correct depth, lock it there again, get better accuracy by locking the, the axis that's not in motion. Head travel on the machine is about 16 and a half inches. So you've got quite a bit of adjustability there. The quill travel is about five and a quarter inches. And it is a fairly large diameter quill for a machine this size. It is three inches in diameter. That gives you better rigidity. That head can adjust anywhere from zero, it can get right down on the table, all the way up to 19 inches away. Okay, so we've talked about the controls on this side. Let's go around the other side of the machine and look at some more controls. Uh, from the operator's position over here, you can see there's very easy to read sight glass. Gives you your oil level inside the headstock. That's one of the things that helps the machine run quieter as the gears do run in oil. You've got a standard drill press function on the machine and you've got a regular mill feed. The drill press handle simply unlock the lock and the feed is up and down. When you want to feed the mill, engage the lock and then the mill feeds up and down. Again, the machine features dovetails on a square column so that as you would make your movements up and down with the mill head, it stays accurate. And this is with the tapered gib to maintain your accuracy that way as well. The head height adjustment is a very simple crank. It cranks down or cranks up to whatever height you need. The mill head also has the ability to adjust. It'll rotate either direction. You have an incremental scale that helps you to read the degrees that you're adjusting to. The square head is more accurate for adjusting up and down. It helps you maintain your accuracy when you move the machine. You have an adjustable tapered gib on these hand scraped ways and then you have double locks to hold the head in position. Let's talk about some of the dimensions on the machine. The spindle to column is about 10 and 3 eighths inches. The table itself is again is 32 by 9 and it features a travel of 23 and an eighth by 8 and 13 sixteenths. You can put a 1 inch drill in there, you can put a 1 inch end mill, you can put up to a 3 inch face mill in it. 
The machine does feature double locks on all the axes. So you've got double locks on X, double locks on Y, and double locks on Z. That helps you to lock things down on the axis that's not being driven so that you can get better accuracy with the machine. Again, all the dials do read in thousandths. All the tooling is R8. The T slots on the table are standard 5 eighths inch. And the machine is uh, about 56 inches tall in total. Stands about 47 inches wide. And the footprint right on the floor is about 25 by 17. So even though it's a fairly good sized medium duty mill, it doesn't take up too much room in the shop. There is a stand available for the table with or without the chip tray. Uh, the stand is set up so you can catch coolant with it if you'd like to. It does have a locking door and storage space for your bigger items, uh, vices, some chucks, fixtures that you might have that you want to store out of the way.